Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the constellations and how to find them. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about new videos. Learn the Sky is also on Patreon, so if you'd like to support this channel, the link is listed below. And finally, if you would like to study the sky in greater detail and need a guide, visit LearnTheSky.com to learn more about our online classes we offer. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video we will learn about the constellation known as Crux, and most often called the Southern Cross. Crux is represented as the Southern Cross, and it's an ancient constellation. It was known by some cultures in the Northern Hemisphere, but by 400 BC it no longer rose above the horizon, and then sailed out of existence in the memory of those ancient Northern cultures. However, many non-Western cultures in the Southern Hemisphere recognize this constellation, including indigenous Australians, Maori, Javanese, Mapuche, Southern African nations, and many, many more. The name Crux is Latin for crossed, and it's the smallest of all the 88 constellations. It really has a deep cultural significance in many cultures in the Southern Hemisphere. So when can you see it? In terms of the Northern Hemisphere, you really need to be at tropical latitudes from 20 degrees and lower latitudes. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it can be seen all year round from most places. However, this can vary depending on your location in the Southern Hemisphere. What you want to look for are the four stars that make a cross-shaped pattern in the sky. And this constellation can be used to help you find the South Celestial Pole. Crux is also located in the bright portion of the Milky Way, and it's known for the Colsac Nebula, which is located right here, and the Julebach Cluster, which is this little tiny thing right here. It's not truly a star, but rather a open star cluster. My experience with seeing the Southern Cross really comes from living in Hawaii and seeing it from there. I wasn't really sure about what it was for a period of time, but what I loved about this constellation is once I researched a little bit more about it, I realized it could help you find Alpha Centauri, which is the closest star system to our own. So I was able to use this star pattern to help me find those close stars that are nearby to the Southern Cross. Let's review the pattern that Crux makes across the sky. So here you have the Southern Cross, and you can see it makes that easy to spot out cross pattern. And the stars are bright if you compare it to the magnitude right here. The alpha star is that of first magnitude, or it may even be zero magnitude. It's kind of hard to tell comparing the shapes. But here you can see there's two other bright stars that are right here. This one being Alpha Centauri, and this is Beta Centauri. We So going around, in terms of the brightest stars, we have Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta, and then this star is often included as Epsilon. So here we have a large sky view. Again, I'm seeing that uh, the emu from the um, indigenous Australian culture. I kind of see the shape of that bird right here. But the Southern Cross is located right here, and it can be used to help you find other constellations as well. It's located right next to Centaurus, and while the constellation of Centaurus may not completely stand out with all of its stars, the two stars that are important are right here. We have Alpha Centauri and then Beta Centauri. We also have this really cool globular cluster up here that looks like a star, but it's really a star cluster. And what's interesting is that this is Alpha Centauri, which is the closest star system to us. If we were to point out other constellations here, this yellow one right here is Centaurus. So Centaurus is represented as a centaur. So here would be the head, his arms, and then he kind of has this triangular body. Here are his legs and then the hind legs as well. This one right here is Lupus the fox. So use these different stars from the Southern Cross to help you find the rest of Centaurus. So here we are again. Are you able to find the Southern Cross? Hopefully, if you're able to see it, it's right here. And then the other two stars right here are from um, Centaurus. So we have Alpha Centauri, which is the brighter one, but it's being obscured by clouds. And then we have Beta Centauri as well. 
And if we want to quick get some more practice of what this looks like, here we have the two brightest stars of Centaurus, which is towards the left side, and then you have the Southern Cross towards the bottom right. So here it is, we have the Southern Cross right there, and if we were to point this out, you can kind of use this portion of the cross to kind of aim you in this direction of where those bright stars would be. And again, here's Alpha Centauri, which is actually a triple star system. It's really close, only a little over four light years away. It's, it's very fascinating. So if we were to take a look at this system, you have Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and then Proxima Centauri is another smaller star that's a little farther away from the main two. And they're fairly, these two main stars are fairly comparable to our own sun in terms of size and color. We'll continue to get more practice with looking at different pictures of the Southern Cross so you can really get familiar with what it looks like. I love this photo because it's a wide field photo of the Southern Cross and the stars that surround it. And you can also see the Colsac Nebula, which is a dark nebula right in this region. And it's dark because there's gas there that's obscuring light from the surrounding stars. I also think it's really interesting with how bright these stars came out, and it's because this picture was taken under cloudy conditions, so the stars really look like these giant beautiful orbs. Here we can see another picture of both the Southern Cross and then the two brightest stars in Centaurus, and you can use these two areas to help direct you towards the South Celestial Pole. So um, let's explain what that looks like. If you were to draw a perpendicular line between the southern pointers, which are those two brightest stars in Centaurus, and then from the gamma star down to the alpha star, and you draw these imaginary lines, the point where they intersect is very close to the south celestial pole. So you can use these areas to help you find that particular spot in the sky. But of course, if you're living in the southern or in the northern hemisphere, you're not going to be seeing the south celestial pole. You really have to be in the southern hemisphere for that to happen. Here's another great photo. This is probably a little bit more of what you'll see in the sky when compared to this. But um, here the Southern Cross really stands out. You can also see the Southern Pointers. So if we were to practice using these two areas to help you find the South Celestial Pole, this is what we would do. You would take a perpendicular line from the Southern Pointers, aim it down, and then from the Gamma to Alpha Star, and then this is kind of, I drew this on here, this is kind of very close to where the South Celestial Pole would be. Let's review over the celestial objects that sit in the boundaries of the Southern Cross constellation. So in this star map, you can see there are a wide variety of objects that not only sit within the boundaries of Crux, but also are nearby. So you can use the Southern Cross to help you find some of these objects. Here is the Carina Nebula, which is a gorgeous object, and use this constellation to kind of aim you in that direction. We also have the Running Chicken Nebula, the Southern Pleiades right here. This right here is known as Omega Centauri, which is a globular star cluster that's thought to once be a galaxy. So there's really a lot to see, but if we were to zoom in only on this constellation, we can focus in on the Jewel Box Cluster located right here next to the Beta Star of Crux, and then this whole region right here is known as the Colsac Nebula, which is a dark nebula, a, a dark area within the constellation um, and throughout the Milky Way galaxy. And then of course, right nearby, not within it, but nearby is the Running Chicken Nebula. I really just love that name, uh, the Running Chicken Nebula. It's kind of difficult for me to see that shape within here, but you can use the Alpha Star right here to help kind of direct you in that particular area. So the Julenbach star cluster is an open star cluster estimated to be 6,400 light years away. And as I said earlier, it's located near the beta star of this constellation. And if we were to zoom in, what stands out here is this 
red super giant star. It really is in contrast to the rest of the blue stars that surround it. And this particular open star cluster only contains a little over a hundred stars and is estimated to be 10 million years old. But it's really gorgeous and beautiful and fairly easy to point out if you know where to look. The Colsac Nebula Cloud Complex is another area that's worth trying to observe within the Southern Cross constellation. This is a dark nebula that's estimated to be 590 light years away. So if you're looking at this picture, here's the Southern Cross. The Colsac Nebula is this whole region right here. And if we were to zoom in, you could see what it looks like right there and this is just an area that has really dense gas so there are other stars that are behind it maybe even within it that just can't quite penetrate through the thickness of these clouds and what's really interesting is the Colsac Nebula is represented as the head of the emu in um, indigenous Australian cultures so this is kind of a bird that shows up in many mythological stories. So here you have the Southern Cross, and then this would be the head of the emu. And then the neck goes down right here, and then this is like the body of the bird. So really, really interesting that this particular Colsac Nebula is part of a larger representation of a mythical creature in the sky. Let's examine some of the legends behind the Southern Cross. It is often the stories of the stars that we can connect to in some way, which can help us remember the constellation. In the Maori culture, Crux was known as Te Punga, or the anchor, and it played a significant role in naval navigation. For many people in the Southern Hemisphere, this constellation has a great deal of cultural significance. The Incas knew the Crux as Chacana, or the stair, and a stone image of the stars have been found in Machu Picchu. Also at Machu Picchu is this kite-shaped sacred stone that sits in one of the small squares around the temple at Machu Picchu, and it's thought to represent the Southern Cross constellation. The Southern Cross can be seen on a whole host of national flags from countries in the Southern Hemisphere. Here we have the flag of New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, the flag of Brazil, the flag of Samoa, and many others as you can see here. So it can't be understated on how important this constellation is for people of the Southern Hemisphere. However, I am a Northerner. I've always lived in the Northern Hemisphere, and while I've visited countries like Brazil, Peru, and Argentina, I haven't really lived there so I can't speak of what this constellation looks like from those arenas and I only discovered it when I was living in Hawaii and when I did see it it felt really special to see it especially when I learned I can use it to help me find that special star Alpha Centauri which is the closest star to our own system and remember the mythologies of the stars vary according to time place and culture there is no one true mythology for any constellation just a variety of them We've come to the end of our video about Crux, the Southern Cross constellation, so let's review everything we've learned so far. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's best to see this constellation in the springtime, but you need to be at the tropical latitudes in order to see it. In the Southern Hemisphere, this constellation can be seen throughout most of the year, however this can vary depending on your location in the Southern Hemisphere. In terms of classification, it's classified as a seasonal constellation, and the best way to find it is to look for that distinctive cross shape that sits in the Milky Way galaxy. In terms of celestial objects, there's the Jewel Box Cluster located right here, as well as the Colsac Nebula. There's also other celestial objects that surround this constellation that are outside of its own boundaries. So use the Southern Cross to help you find those other interesting celestial objects as well. So remember, practice makes perfect when it comes to trying to find the constellations. This is one of those constellations that I found much later in my stargazing career, or hobby I should say, and it 
really was special when I was able to see it. And then when I learned that you can use the Southern Cross to help you find Alpha Centauri, which is the closest star system to us, that made it even more exciting. And I was really, really excited to be able to discover ways in order to figure out where Alpha Centauri is. In my particular location in Hawaii, Alpha Centauri wasn't super bright, but that's probably because it's lower on the horizon and not always visible from where I was located. So I wish you luck finding the Southern Cross. It really is a special constellation. Remember, keep going outside, share what you've learned with others, and keep looking up.